Hi guys, this video is about planting and growing garlic for beginners and I hope that you enjoy it. Hi everyone, Miss Sally here, Learn to Grow. I hope that you guys are having a great day. So I'm so excited to share this video with you guys because I partnered with Vermistera to plant over 400 garlic cloves. Now over 300 of these are true garlic while the other 100 are elephant garlic. They are all in the same family, the allium family, but the elephant garlic is closer to the leek. Now I'm sure many of you have heard of Vermistera and their worm castings. Vermistera is a family-owned worm farm operating since 2002 and they farmed for 20 years before starting a worm farm. The worms are fed green waste only and the castings are aged 7 to 10 years and screened to ensure purity. The castings and worm tea are lab tested to make sure that they are free of heavy metals and pathogens. So before I get to planting, I'm going to go over some information about growing garlic. Garlic is usually planted in the fall because they need that chilling period of at least 45 days or vernalization in order for them to produce healthy, robust bulbs. And you want to get them in the ground at least a couple of weeks before your first frost date. What's recommended is between two to eight weeks before your first frost date. And that'll give the cloves a chance to establish roots and then they'll remain dormant through the fall and winter months. And when the ground warms up in the spring, they'll sprout up. Now let's go over the two garlic types to plant. So one type is the hard neck and the other one is soft neck. Now the hard neck varieties will grow this scapes or flower stalk and that center flower stalk will produce a hard stem where the soft neck does not produce any scapes at all and just has the leaf blades. So the next step is selecting the type of garlic to grow. The soft neck variety tends to do well in warmer climates. They are more adapted to the warmer regions where a hard Hard neck variety tends to do well in cooler climates. Now I do plant both and I try to plant the ones or the varieties that do well in my zone. I'm in zone 8B. So this year I am planting Inchilium Red which is native to the Pacific Northwest and also I planted the Italian soft neck varieties before and they seem to do well here. Now for the warmer climates you can try California Early Garlic and I will leave some links below um, of some varieties that you can select from. And I'll also leave a link below of my playlist on growing, planting, harvesting, and curing garlic. Now, if you've never grown garlic before, it takes about seven to nine months from planting to harvest. We typically plant ours between October and November before our first frost, and we harvest in July through August, just depending on the weather. And also they will grow best in full sun. And you want to make sure that the soil is loose and loamy and drains well, and also of course fertile. I'll show you guys the types I am planting this fall, and I am so excited because I am trying out some new varieties. Now, before you plant your garlic make sure you amend your soil with plenty of organic matter garlic is a heavy feeder so we're going to be amending the soil and prepping the beds with vermistero's worm castings so i am running out of daylight and i only have time to prep the beds so i'm going to be planting most of them in the in-ground beds here i had to do some weeding and rake the soil and also some of them are going to go into a couple of raised beds so I usually plant them right next to the kale and, and in between. And it's actually a good thing because uh, garlic is a great companion plant. It actually helps deter insect pests and animal pests. It also has antifungal properties, antimicrobial and antiviral. So it's got a lot of good benefits planting your other crops next to garlic. Today we're going to be amending the soil with some worm castings. And so let's get this opened up. And now the reason why I love to use worm castings is because it is a natural soil amendment and or fertilizer. And it contains beneficial microbes, fungi, plant hormones, which will aid in helping the plant establish its root system and also micro and macronutrients. So it pretty much includes all the beneficial nutrients and microbes that our plants and the, our plants and the soil need. Show you how beautiful these worm castings are. It smells earthy. Look at this, guys. So there are so many great things about using worm castings as a soil amendment, and it is safe for organic gardening and safe around children and pets. So let's go ahead and pour some worm castings on the garden here, and I'll show you how easy it is to do. You can go ahead and work it into the soil if you like. But using it as a top dressing is okay because once you water them in or when it rains, all the beneficial microbes, fungi, nutrients will get washed down into the soil. And this also saves me some time. 
When adding worm castings, you can apply one pound per square foot for vegetables and fruits for established beds, or double the amount for new garden beds and if there is low organic matter in the soil. Don't worry if you add a little extra. Worm castings won't harm your plants, unlike chemical fertilizers. Since the nutrients in worm castings are encased in mucous membranes, they are released over time as plants need them and won't burn plant roots. Also, the nutrients are readily available since the castings are completely broken down. Besides nourishing the soil, worm castings increase water retention, improve soil aeration, and anchor plant nutrients that would otherwise leach away with water. This one here is called Mount Hood. Beautiful cloves and bulbs, really big. And remember, the harnack varieties will have this firm stalk in the middle. The soft neck is usually the soft stem right there. So that's how you can tell. And also, the hard neck varieties will have bigger cloves, but fewer, as you can see. And the soft neck usually has more cloves, but they are smaller. And soft neck varieties are usually milder than the hard neck ones. The hard neck varieties can develop a complex, more spicy flavor, and they are delicious. This one here are the soft neck and Killium red garlic, native to Washington State. And these are music garlic, another hard neck variety. And over in this basket are elephant garlic. So these are the bigger ones. They are milder than the garlic. And it also has some immature bulbs that were grown from corms. These are the bulbils or corms of elephant garlic that grow on the roots of them. And the first year you plant this, you will be harvesting a bulb like this, a mature bulb. And when I plant this this fall, I'll be harvesting a mature bulb next summer. So it takes two seasons to grow from corms, from this little seed to a mature elephant garlic. And over here is called the Deerfield Hardneck, another beautiful variety. Look at this, guys. And I'll leave the links below on where I purchased some of these garlic. Some of these I've grown in our garden. Uh, especially these ones here. These were these were grown from our garden. I don't remember the actual variety of these soft neck ones. They were given to me by my auntie and uncle. These ones I believe are some Italian purple stripe. There's probably a couple of music garlic in here as well. Here is a new variety I am trying out this year. This is a soft neck variety. It is called Chet's Italian and it is actually native to Washington State. When we go to the store, we normally see soft neck varieties. That's because they can store longer. If stored in ideal conditions, they can last between nine to 12 months. Hard neck can last four to six months. Just make sure to store your garlic in a dark, dry place with good air circulation, and ideally in temperatures between 60 to 65 degrees Fahrenheit. So before you plant your garlic, make sure you do not take them apart. Some of these already came apart. You want to keep the cloves intact right before you plant them. If you take them apart too early, they can dry out. And you want to leave the papery husk or skin on the cloves. So you want to break them apart carefully so you don't take the husk off or the skin. So just like that. So I'm going to spend a few minutes taking these apart first before we plant them. Look how huge these cloves are. So again, this one is called Mount Hood. So when you plant your garlic, make sure that the planting hole is at least an inch and a half to two inches deep. Now, some people plant them deeper, I think, if they live in a cooler climate. So I typically just plant them about two inches deep. And this time I am using a planter auger just because I am planting so many cloves of garlic this year. And this tool will help me get my work done faster and more efficient. If you decide to use a planter auger, just make sure to wear safety goggles. There could be some rocks flying around. Planting holes are ready, two inches deep and six inches apart. Time to plant the cloves. Plant them blunt side down and point side up, just like this. Try and plant the bigger cloves. You'll end up with bigger cloves and garlic bulbs. And you can save the small ones for eating. After you bury the cloves, water if the soil is dry. If it is moist, there is no need to water. Water in the spring with half an inch to an inch of water weekly or more in warmer months and water till two weeks before harvest. And add some mulch. Got the Deerfield Purple Hardneck planted in this bed. This one measures six feet long and 42 inches wide. If you're using the square foot method, you can plant up to six cloves per square foot. 
Got the music garlic planted in this bed and the rest were planted throughout the garden and in some containers. Like I've mentioned before, garlic makes a great companion plant. All right, guys, I'm going to finish up before I lose daylight again. So after you plant your garlic, it is a good idea to mulch your garden beds with dry grass, dry leaves, wood chips, straw or hay. Mulching will help conserve moisture, protect the cloves during the winter time, and also prevent weeds from sprouting and will also protect the beneficial microbes and fungi in the soil. I hope that you guys found this video helpful and let me know if you guys are also planting garlic. Thanks for watching everyone and remember to share this video and happy gardening.